All right, so in this video, what we're gonna do is take a look at the spline mask as well as the bool commands inside of our pen tool. Now these are both ways we can work with splines, very much like Pathfinder or even Shape Builder to a certain extent inside of Illustrator. So let's go ahead and get started. All right, so we're starting super basic today. Going to create a rectangle as well as a circle, looks like. Rotated the wrong way here, so we'll get that all fixed. And what we're going to do is just kind of move these around so that, you know, one is intersecting or going through the other. So that way we have our two shapes here and we can decide what we want to do with them. So first thing is if we're gonna be using the spline mask, we can absolutely leave these as primitive, okay? Or not make them editable. So I can come over here to my generators, find our spline mask, and put both of our shapes in. Now, we're gonna see uh, something happen um, it may be what we want, it may be what we don't want, all depending on the orientation of our shapes. As these are basic shapes, it's very easy for me to um, choose what plane I want them to be um, created on and then match that plane inside of our spline mask, okay? If these aren't shapes that are primitive or basic and perhaps they're something you created with the spline tool, what then becomes important to kind of think about is what axis you're working along. And so it's, it's whatever axis these um, are even. So along the Z, you know, it could be on the X, Y, depending on however you set these shapes up. But um, in order for these to work, they need to be in the same plane, have the same value along one axis, and that's the axis that you're going to look for it to be along. And that is the axis, the, um, you know, the spline mask, the combining, the intersecting, unioning, whatever is going to happen on. From there, you can then choose your different modes. So I can choose A subtract B, and that's where the order here does matter a little bit, B subtract A, and or, although I'm not sure or is working quite right here, uh, or intersection, okay? Which also, I'm not 100% certain that is working correctly. But let's say you wanted to create a complex shape like this, you know, you're pretty much done. Uh, what's nice about this is from here, you can do a couple of different things. You can hit create cap, which does create a polygon for us. Now, unfortunately, this isn't like an extrude, so we don't have those additional options. But as this is still considered a spline, you can then take this spline mask and put it into something like an extrude. And then you have all your options there. So that's a really convenient way of kind of working uh, is procedurally as non-destructive as possible because these are still primitive shapes, okay? Which is important because if you noticed, uh, we have some issues here, right? Notice how our shapes kind of lose some of their, their definition. The corners aren't as um, well-defined or as hard as they were previously. That usually has something to do with the intermediate points type. And it can have something a little bit to do with what shape is on top, right? Notice how it kind of changed when the rectangle was on top versus the circle. And that's because whatever shape is on top, it um, essentially adapts that intermediate points type, not to use the, the word adaptive there. So circle was set to uniform, which is why we are having issues. Now, either way, you still may want to make some changes depending on what mode uh, of intermediate points you were using, adaptive, natural, uniform, whatever. So if you're using adaptive, if your top shape is adaptive, then you would want to turn the angle down and that should help to smooth things out a little bit. If it doesn't, go down to your second shape and work with that one, okay? In this case, since it's uniform, I just wanna turn the points up more. And that would help even if the order was switched here, adjusting the uniform, right? Ooh, so um, that can be really helpful. In fact, I probably wouldn't use uniform um, if that's what I was going for just because it can run into so many issues. You know, natural um, is usually a good bet. Uh, subdivided kind of gives you the best of both worlds, average or angle and maximum length. But that's something to keep in mind is there can be a little bit of extra work to do to kind of maintain the original shape if that's what's going to be very important for you. And just to turn on our lines here, you can see uh, we ended up with quite a bit of polygons when using that subdivided and even more so with uniform when we turned up these numbers so high. Not a bad thing to kind of keep in mind, keep on as you're adjusting this so you can see, all right? Even adaptive will probably work pretty well, um, though I would want to turn this angle down 
um, to give me some more definition on the circle since that's where you get more points with adaptive. So that's all well and good. That's the majority of the spline mask. I'm going to come back to it and talk to you more about a, a slightly more realistic example or ways we can take this a bit further. But before we do that, um, I wanted to talk about the other way of kind of doing the same type of thing using our spline bool commands. And these, okay, you do need to have editable objects. So you can either hit C on the keyboard or choose make editable. And from there, I do think it helps just to have things selected, though I'm not certain that's what you need to do. Um, you can select both shapes, right click, and then at the very bottom here, you have your bool commands. And you can see we have spline subtract. We have, oops, let's click a little bit further up here, spline union. So very much like what we are seeing. Okay, now a couple of things I wanna point out here. One, once again, the order does matter, very much just like the spline mask, but what it's doing is taking two shapes and combining them into one. So on, on one hand, that might be exactly what you want, okay? On the other hand, it is being somewhat destructive because if you wanted to come back and change either of these original shapes, you're gonna have a much harder time doing it and you may need to recreate both of these shapes in order to you know, do what you want. So just keep that in mind. I think this is a little bit faster way of doing things. Um, you know, we don't run into quite as many issues with having to work with the, the mo um, well, the mode you still have to use, but the axis, that can be a little bit trickier um, since in our spline commands, you know, Cinema 4D is, is figuring that out for us. So uh, definitely worth a shot, you know, but we also didn't have any issues with the number of points we're getting um, and how round and, or, how our corners looked. So those are definitely some good reasons um, to use this. But ultimately, I do like spline mask depending on the situation. And so I wanted to show you a little bit more of a kind of a real life situation here where I've used spline masks quite a bit. And that's kind of an architectural um, projects where uh, I may get a CAD file, I may have to pen tool out a lot of the, the lines myself. But ultimately, I might have something like this where um, I'm going to have this sidewalk um, going around. And in the middle here, I'm going to have two areas of grass. Okay, now the grass is pretty straightforward. You know, it's two shapes. I could throw this into an extrude. And I'll just set this to negative three um, to give this some grass. And just so we can see this, let's just give this a little bit of a grass color here. Perfect. I usually do this for my architectural projects as well, just to help differentiate things in my perspective view without having to have my materials turned on. But let's say we want to create the sidewalk because the sidewalk, this shape is really just a rectangle, okay? It would be nice if I could take my grass shape um, and use it to subtract from our outer shape here to create um, our sidewalk. The problem is, uh, well, I shouldn't say the problem, but one way of doing this would be to take your spline mask, copy the grass spline, put it inside, um, and then, you know, come into the object section here and make some adjustments. Now, I'm gonna want this to be along the Y axis since that's kind of where these uh, um, shapes sit on. So that's what I'll do. And then I need to make sure I have the right mode. So it could be A subtract B, let's see. Yep, looks like that is right. And so now with this shape, hopefully it makes a little bit more sense with what I'm doing. I can put this into an extrude and obviously we don't want that. So let's just do something like four centimeters. Okay, and there we go. We have our sidewalk. We have our grass perfectly cut out, not intersecting. So that is one of the ways I like to do architectural things like sidewalks, like grass. Now the problem with this, really the only issue, is that if I, for whatever reason, need to make a change to the grass, let's say the architect or designer changes their mind about something and they you know, change this and so one of these is a little bit shorter, well, then I have to update um, not just my grass spline here, but the grass spine spline that is in my extrude as well. And that can be a little bit cumbersome, especially with architectural projects where you can have so many different objects and layers and, you know, details and things to worry about. So what I would do instead, actually get rid of that grass spline here. You may be going, well, that seems to work. It does. Uh, but depending on how I create my grass, this might not work. Typically for my grass, I actually use um, Forester and clone a bunch of uh, grass onto this. And so this actually doesn't poke up. In fact, the grass would actually be 
uh, lower. So um, it would be maybe just be zero centimeters. Um, and it's the sidewalk that would be kind of above it. So something like that. All right. But we can't see it because it isn't cut out here. Um, our grass isn't cut out. So what we're going to do to fix this is select the grass spline, come over here and choose instance. So this is going to create a copy or instance of our, our grass line. It's going to reference it. And this is still a spline, so I can put it inside of my spline mask here. And so now it's using this spline, right? Our original grass spline um, is what this instance is using. And what that means is if I change this one grass spline, it updates that instance. And so that makes it very easy for me to make changes. It also means I only have to worry about making one shape, changing one shape. And that also can be very helpful. And so this is what I was talking about, where I have my grass kind of sunken in like this, and then I would add my forester grass on to this, uh, which if anybody would like to see, please leave a comment and let me know if you would like me to do some more architectural kind of related videos like this, whether it's putting grass or placing people or uh, anything else as um, I do have a lot of uh, things I could create videos about if people are interested in that regard. But ultimately, that's going to do it for the spline mask. And it's why I prefer using it over the bool commands is because it allows me to work non-destructively, or at least more non-destructively, and make changes quicker and easier. So that will do it for this video. If there's anything else you would like to see, please let me know. Until next time, take care.